Hi everyone, welcome to our panel. Uh, I'm Hawk. I uh, help run a lot of Rising Sun, um, more of the publisher side of things here. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to some people. This is Bill Nedro, our writer, on what we're about to talk about here today. And we have David down here, and uh, David is an editor inside of this, helping me run this thing, yeah? Yep. So today we're going to talk about Adventure Team, right? Everyone's excited about Adventure Team. We've got something special we want to show you. Hopefully you like it. Um, we're going to crank the music on this thing and uh, let's see. Let's see what you think about it. right mm, who that who's that guy uh, so this project got started uh, from uh, a piece of art that was posted in 2020 by Tim Ellis Tim Ellis did this art and uh, Hawk noticed it on uh, the intrawebs and said that's an interesting idea let me uh, talk to you about that uh, uh, Tim and see what we could do and they worked out uh, uh, an idea and uh, Hawk brought on me as the editor uh, for this project and we brought on uh, Bill Nedro to be our writer for this project. It is basically a reimagining of the adventure team and a continuation of the adventure team both. Uh, what is going to be going on is there's a new threat that forces the adventure team to come back to the forefront uh, of where uh, the military is to fight this new threat. The uh, name of that is going to be the Apex event. And it is a worldwide, uh, planet-wide event that they have to come together to fight. And there's other people on the Earth that is also fighting this event but we're focusing mainly on the adventure team. Um, so there's uh, some familiar characters and some reimagined familiar characters that you'll notice if you're familiar with the old adventure team and their characters. So the first uh, character we're going to I want to talk about this, uh, this art real quick and then get into it. Sure. Yeah. So uh, you can see here that what Tim Ellis had done is this book is intended to be nostalgic throwback. It has a lot of cues, like a, a piece of artwork that is very loved and read over and over again. A lot of people get this confused and they start asking, is this a real thing? You know, and uh, the, the question is that it wasn't then, it will be now. So, so we're, gonna, we're gonna try and uh, keep a homage to that 70s style of storytelling. And there's gonna be a lot of, lot of fold back into that kind of idea when it comes down to this Adventure Team comic. Uh, this is a this is a concept, a work in progress, and uh, you know, uh, you know, all, all projects evolve. So we're going to go through some characters and let you guys kind of talk about story and characters and everything else. So, so um, we're going to try and get it. We're going to try and do come out in 2024 20, with it. We'll we'll see if that uh, that that holds still, and uh, we're going to talk about it, the Adventure Team now. 
So, so we want to let Bill talk a little bit about story, and then we can go into character. Sure. Go okay. ahead. Go for it, Bill. Yeah, I was I was brought in uh, after they had spoken to Tim, uh, and I was initially or instantly really kind of gripped by the idea that they had going on here. Um, these are some characters that I hadn't had a chance to kind of play with in the '70s, uh, so it was great to kind of, like you said, reimagine them a little bit and kind of figure out where they fit in this new world. Um, <clears throat> Really excited as well because I've been doing a lot of kind of realistic military fiction, so this kind of gave me a chance to flex my, my wings a little more, do more of a lean into some other things that I haven't been able to do from my from my writing career thus far, um, and, and really instantly kind of fell in love with a lot of these characters, which is you know part of the joy of writing is you, you get to see these characters grow and evolve and see how they're going to respond to these threats that uh, that form the context of this world. We're ready for this this first round out of character here. We're going to talk about the commander. So I'll so let you take it from here. The commander uh, existed prior. Uh, he was part of the original uh, adventure team, and so we've kind of taken taken a kind of a new tact with him. We made him a career military person, and we're also connecting him to a, a, the larger GI Joe continuity uh, that has existed. Uh, and some of what we're doing is going to leak into a real American hero, but not not huge, just little tidbits, little teeny tidbits. Uh, but the commander is the leader of this team. He brings this team together, and he's the one that's in charge of making sure that they combat this new threat. And he's very strong, he's very uh, dedicated, he's very uh, committed, and he's in control at all times in the story as you go through. You know he's the leader. It's been interesting to write from a, from a character perspective because nominally he, he appears to be maybe the, the weakest of the characters uh, in terms of power set. Um, but you know, as David said, he's got, he's got skills that, that more than make up for that. So. Been a lot of fun to write, and you can see it. You can see here, of course, we're we're playing off of the uh, Black American, you know, adventure, you know, uh, bearded adventure, you know, that came out in the 1970s. So and we wanted to, we wanted to, you know, rather than do, uh, you know, rather than do the command, you know, the commander or Joe Colton, as some people know him, we decided to kind of go a different route, you know, with that whole process, you know, um, allowing us to explore and be able to tell stories a little outside of. Maybe some of the continuities that are already there. And our next character is Eagle Eye. Now, for you fans of the old uh, G.I. Joe, you may remember that there was a figure of Joe Colton, Eagle Eye Joe Colton. We're reimagining that character as a completely new, whole cloth character that is more of a Native American character that has skills uh, in that vein, but also part of the adventure team. So he's in the military, he has those skills as well. And he's a very unique character and the writing process has been a, a little bit of a, a pull and tug on how far we want to go with the Native American aspects and how far we don't want to go. So we've been playing with him. He's been our toughest character to try to develop. I'll let you go. Um, I was just going to say, it, it, yeah, there has been some challenges, but what's been really exciting is, personality-wise, he's characterized one way, but when we meet him, we meet him in a situation where uh, that, that's being very much tested right away. Um, so there's instant conflict within him. It's been interesting to kind of explore that and, and see how he's responding to these challenges that um, we're, we're immediately introduced to. And our next character is Bullet Man. Everybody knows Bullet Man. Everybody loves Bullet Man. He's basically the Bullet Man that we all remember. This is a younger Bullet Man in that vein, so he's more impetuous. He's going to be one of the uh, action characters of the series, and so the commander is going to have to try to rein him in because he's so gung ho. Uh, but we really love playing with this character. He's been a fun character to incorporate into the series, and I think all uh, of the readers are going to enjoy him as well. Yeah, he's, he, he really fits that archetype of the, the, the youthful exuberance, um, 
and, and again, just, just because of when we're meeting this team, uh, some of that naivete is, is kind of starting starting to tarnish a little bit. Um, so it, you know, it'll be interesting to see how he responds to that and how he grows over the course of, of the run. And our next character is Power Man. Now this is a reimagining of Power Man because that was also a Joel Colton uh, toy, Power Man was. And so we reimagine this character as a kind of a, a, a military scientist type character that incorporates different technology into the physical aspects of himself. And there's struggles that he has to realize the limitations of those uh, technological advancements that he's incorporated. And every one of our characters has human aspects to them that will be developed through the stories that will show that they are not just uh, one tone characters. There's levels to these characters and levels in the stories as we tell these stories. And this is a character that you're probably gonna shed a tear as the stories goes on because he's got a struggle that he's dealing with. One of the first things we did in the, in the process was kind of sit down and, and have a, start to develop a character bible and kind of look at what these characters could and couldn't do and, and yeah, really flesh out what, what made them human and, and kind of would make them relatable and sympathetic to the, t um, to the readers. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of proud of what, where we where we have him at the moment. Yeah, I think I, I think this character, uh, you know, out of all of them, it, you know, he has the most human arc. I think beyond all of it. So I, I think it's something we can all relate to, you know, as we're as we move to this. So. And our next character is Cheetah. Now this is a character that was in the original adventure team. He didn't have a name. He was just uh, one of the the versions of G.I. Joe. He wore the red jumpsuit. So we're kind of reinterpreting him. Part of this adventure team and this new threat is some of these characters end up with skills because of the Apex event. And those skills are incorporated into the characters. So this is another character that is uh, kind of new, but kind of existing with new kind of attributes because of the Apex event. I don't want to give it away, uh, but you can look at this piece of art and kind of have an idea of where this character is going. So, and I don't want to give too much away of what happens to this character, but this character is an integral part, part of this uh, series, and you're gonna want to uh, keep reading to find out what happens to this character. Uh, but I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm not going to add anything to that, just just so that yeah, nothing nothing is ruined. I want to talk about the design element because I've I've looked at this black and white, and I was looking at it black and white for a while, and then whenever the color come on, I was like, whoa, okay, you know, <laughs> we're definitely going there. It's bright. It's 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 really quite fun. I love the leopard print, you know, kind of like in engagement between it. So um, so I'm really happy with how that came out. Um, we'll move on to our next. I do want to say one thing. Uh, Tim Ellis is our designer and artist that brought this project together. He's designed all these characters. He's designed the new Adventure Team logo. And by the end of the panel, if you haven't already gotten a uh, Adventure Team pin, come up and I will give you an Adventure Team pin. He developed the new logo for the Adventure Team for this new project as well. Tim Ellis is a toy designer. He's also worked in packaging. He works with automotive. So he he's definitely has a design degree. And, and I think, you know, he, you can see that throughout his work, that he's really thinking about spaces and, and, and all of those aspects and how they better merge together. His, his artwork has been really, really useful. When we first started talking, we had names, we had some kind of ideas, and I was starting to get to know these characters and see how to write them. Um, but then seeing this stuff just kind of breathes life into them such so that when I sit down to write, they just kind of are, are living things on their own. And our next character, hmm, wonder who this is. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a, a question mark. That's all I'm gonna say. His name is Black Oni, and that's all I can tell you about this character. Uh, but uh, looking at him, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes. Uh, so um, he's a very important character within the story, and he affects 
the characters and the adventure team in this story. And that's all I can tell you. Bill, you want to add anything on that? That's all they'll let me tell you now, but lunch is right after this, so if anybody wants to take me out, we can. <laughs> he swooned in the morning. <clears throat> I'm going to be following behind him. <laughs> all right, let's move on. I want to show, uh, go ahead. This is uh, the first cover for issue, uh, we're calling it issue zero, but it's actually going to be issue one of a three-issue mini-series to start. And depending upon the popularity of the series and the, uh, the, uh, the impact of whether you guys want more down the line, and if it's uh, something you're excited about, we're ready to continue on with this. Um, it's being published by Rising Sun Publishing, uh, and it is going to be distributed, we believe, at this time through Diamond Distribution, which is a, a comic book distribution company that's worldwide. And so we're going to try and hit as many eyeballs as we can with this project to get that popularity up so we can make more of these for you if you guys want to see it. Um, it's been a very fun, enjoyable process working with Bill, working with Tim, working uh, under Rising Sun, uh, and uh, I hope uh, you all enjoy this and look forward to uh, talking more about this uh, next summer. We plan on having issue one by Joe Fest. Cross my fingers, everybody's working hard, so. Um, Bill? Um, yeah, I'm gonna be less vague. I think if you're sitting here right now, you are going to enjoy it. The, the question is going to be whether whether we can get enough people kind of seeing it and, and enjoying it as well. I hope that's the case because I've really started to fall in love with these characters, and I want to know um, where they go. So um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, who's planning on being at Joe Fest? Holy great! Okay, hope, hope to see see this issue there, and hope to see you guys uh, enjoying it and, and spread the word so that uh, they call me back. Yeah. Um. And, you know, I think what I want to say is, is that this is, this is still in concrete. We're still working out the details. We've written stories. And as you see, this is issue zero here. Um, the reason why that's issue zero is we actually wrote a much bigger story, which was much more in-depth. And we felt like, okay, we needed a little bit lighter getting in off the, off the ramp. So Bill's actually working on a revamped, lighter story to get us through the hoop you know, and, and on to some bigger storytelling aspects. So that's why you're seeing an issue zero instead of a one uh, as, we're, as we're going through our process. And the hope is, is that we get an end diamond and we hope that everyone approves and, and uh, we hope that our pitch is well received to all of those in charge and uh, they like it. And that's really involved with you guys as to whether or not you guys want to see more of this kind of content come through. So, so I think that's got Everything, uh, all of us done. Back to the Do you want to watch the video again, Hop, one more time? You guys want to see the video? You guys want to see our, okay. the video one more time? Okay. We're going to do the video one more time for the people that came in a little late. That cover's awesome, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Very 70s. Yeah, we, we could talk That's about that, too. That's what we're going into, getting into. Hold on. I've got a hiccup in the, in the audio again, so let me fix that. If you can't, I'll hum over the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so we could start with a couple of questions, maybe? Here, just unplug it, replug it, but just be careful. It's going to make, it's going to pop. I have to, uh, I have to unplug it every time I... I think so. They were trying earlier, once they got it coming. So uh, we're going to...
So we'd open up the floor to questions. Uh, feel free. Uh, raise your hands. Whoever wants a question. Yes. So you mentioned you were working on with Tim Seeley for the new for the new logos and stuff. Did he? Did Tim he Ellis. Also, but, sorry, Tim Ellis. And then um, did you? Did he do the layout for like the cover and the cover design as well? Yes. Okay. Aces. Really good. Yeah, he's, he's a really good designer, and he's been working really hard with us to develop this concept. And we've had to re, re, try to reimagine some of this stuff, and we're going back and forth with some things. Uh, like I said earlier, Ego Eye has been our most difficult uh, character to try and uh, bake. Hawk likes to use these cooking terms all the time, like bake this and cook that. And this. So we're trying to bake this character, trying to make him real and make him not stereotypical. So he's been the hardest one. Any more questions? Did you want to add to that? I was going to talk a little bit about our color process very, very briefly. Have you noticed that we're using textures and tones? Because we want to pull back that idea of the uh, four color process printing that was done in the 1970s. So we're really trying to push that idea of 1970s storytelling and we really want the book to have that feel in it, so we're going for that idea. You know that this is, uh, you know, that you could have picked this up in the '70s and have been like, "Yeah, this would have, this would and, have been totally no, something we read then." And we're going f further with that. I don't know if it, I should uh, uh, let this sneak by. Or, yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah, we can tell them. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna have some ads in the back of the comics, oh, gag yeah. ads that are gonna be like '70s uh, uh -huh. stuff that you're gonna be like uh, uh, selling Twinkies, that type of stuff. But gag versions of those that'll be all Actually, done yeah. in this style yeah. as well to have fun with it, to really yeah. show yeah. you yeah. that this was possibly out at that time frame. You two can be like Power Man with your see-through X-ray exactly. glasses. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Sea monkey. Sea, 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 sea monkey. monkey, exactly. Yeah. That'll be something make else. Make it, make it like some sort of a play on that, like sea otters or sea... <laughs> well, we, we have an idea. We have an idea. I can't ex uh, reveal it yet, but we have an idea in that vein, Jason. The one that everyone tells me no is, um, you know, I want to do, I want to do the one of get your own uh, radioactive uh, you know, chemical set, you know, complete with plutonium, and they were like, no, 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 you should do that. Just put like crazy disclaimers, like 100% not responsible. Yeah, we're going to fall out. Yeah. So they're going to be really fun. So we're trying to make this as fun as possible and nostalgic as possible. Uh, who, who's next? Who had a question? I just, I, um, is this the first time you've, you've shown anything for... We had a quick reveal at Joe Fest during the Rising Sun panel, but there were so many things in that panel, uh, we didn't feel that it got the notice that it needed, so we wanted a full reveal, and this is our first full reveal. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, and I think it was fairly well received then, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully the word gets out and people are still, you know, get more interested as we, as we move along. Any, any other questions? Yes. Uh, can you go into some detail about Tim's background? What, what's he known for or anything like that? Is there anything you can discuss about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's done a lot of design uh, design work, designer primarily is what he's done, but he's worked on a lot of toy product with, uh, oh gosh, now I can't remember their name. Uh, they, they do they do these sub subscription packages stuff. So he would do, he would work for um, a Funko Pop. Uh, so some of his work is like Funko Pop related and things like that. But he also works a lot in the car industry. So he will go to shows and he actually designs the show booths and stuff like that for, for the automotive industry. And uh, so as a freelance designer, it keeps him on the move quite a bit. And um, you know, his design, his design aspect could go quite far. You know, you know, if you look at this and then you look at something else that he's worked on for automotive, night and day, completely different, you know, completely different concept. <laughs> Gets there. And I think he's been there for quite a while, maybe maybe 20 years or so, in, in uh, doing uh, pop-up displays and things like that. Yeah. But he doesn't have like a co comic book resume or anything like that? He has a little bit of a toy resume, okay. and uh, but no comic book. This is his very first comic book of all time. Just for uh, that content. <laughs> <laughs> there w we're also looking at some other artists that are joining in that may help out with, uh, with, with some of the stories as we're moving forward. Um, we 
won't reveal any of those names yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll see whenever we, we get there. Um, I, I think you guys would be pleased if we get uh, a few of those guys we're, we've been talking to. We're trying to get that aesthetic of the 70s style art and uh, the way that the panels are set up, the way that the pages are set up, so you can look at this and like, oh, this could have come out in 1976 or something like that as a comic book. That's the whole idea, the whole premise of this whole project. And, uh, and it, I think it's coming along really well. And, and there's no better way of getting there, I'll say this, there's no better way of getting there than asking someone that worked in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Mark. Is, is, the, is the idea that this would be a sort of a non-for-profit thing similar to... Uh, this one's going a little bit different this time. So, um, so we are gonna seek out, uh, we're, we're gauging the you know, field response seeing what people really think about it, that we're really interested in, in what we're doing here, and then we're going to go for more of a formal mm -hmm. uh, aspect, you know, so you in order like for diamond three. distribution and things like that. Go ahead. Share a few minutes later, I apologize if you cover this. For, for the book, are you doing a pre-order, or is it going to be something that just you just get through, like, diamonds can be distributed up front, and then you go and, and buy it? Uh, like grabbing that issue yeah. as possible. But I think what we're going to do is um, we're, we're going to be shooting for official licensing and, and like I said, we're going to try that first and, and see how it goes. Hopefully it's real well received. And, you know, if not, this may get buried deep down in the depths of uh, Hasbro vault somewhere. Who knows? But, uh, you know, um, the idea is if that does happen, we're gonna, probably going to go straight to Diamond. Um, and. I, I, I'm not <coughs> surprising some pre-orders with exclusive content um, if, if we get that far. Yeah. So there's a couple other there's a couple other things that we're working on adjacent to this that may unfold as they're as we're building up to it. Any other questions?